The Earth holds secrets it has been whispering for millions of years, and among them lies one of the greatest treasures of all. Gold locked tightly within veins of hard, glistening quartz. Unlike loose nuggets lying in riverbeds, this form of gold does not surrender easily. It hides behind walls of white stone, daring us to uncover it without the dangerous shortcuts of acids or chemicals. What follows is a journey, not just of strength, but of patience, observation, and persistence. A journey of turning stubborn rock into shimmering metal. The first step is always the hunt, and here the veins themselves become the map. Quartz veins slash through the host rock like frozen rivers, often white or milky, sometimes streaked with iron-stained reds and oranges that hint at mineral activity. These iron oxides act like beacons, telling us that something valuable may be locked inside. The seasoned eye lingers on those veins, searching for subtle glimmers, faint metallic streaks, or the delicate hairline fractures that betray the presence of gold. The prospector bends close, scanning surfaces in daylight, tilting the stone against the sun to catch even the tiniest flash of yellow locked in quartz. It is a slow ritual, one requiring patience in a hunter's instinct. Once a promising vein is identified, the work of freeing it begins. Quartz is no ordinary stone. It is hard, unforgiving, and demands the right touch. A hammer and chisel become the tools of choice, not chemicals or acids. The sound of steel against quartz echoes like a drumbeat of determination. Each strike must be precise, calculated not to shatter blindly, but to exploit natural cracks and weaknesses. The prospector works slowly along fault lines, prying sections free, carrying them piece by piece into the daylight where the rock's true face can be studied. Every fracture reveals new surfaces, and with them, the possibility of hidden gold. Now the quartz must be reduced. A large rock may hide riches, but it is only by breaking it down that truth is revealed. Crushing is the ancient method as old as the very act of gold hunting itself. A heavy hammer or mallet pounds against stone, and quartz crumbles under relentless pressure. The process is brutal, yet strangely methodical. Every swing driven by the anticipation of that first glittering flake breaking free. Dust rises, fragments scatter, and slowly stubborn rock yields its secret. But crushing alone is not enough. The gold, heavier than quartz, must be separated. The prospector gathers the broken pieces, grinds them finer, until what remains is a powdery mixture of quartz dust and metallic fragments. At this stage, the timeless principle of gravity takes over. Gold, being far denser than quartz, will always sink while lighter particles wash away. It is here that water becomes the prospector's silent ally. The powdered material is swirled in a pan, the motion careful, circular, deliberate. The lighter quartz dust lifts and drifts off with the water, leaving behind the heavier fragments. Slowly, painstakingly, the pan reveals its treasure. Tiny golden flecks cling to the bottom, too heavy to be carried away. It is not a rush, but a revelation, a glimpse of reward for the labor that brought stone to dust. In this way, gold begins to emerge, not through harsh chemicals, but through simple natural forces, muscle, patience, and gravity. And yet, this is only the beginning. The quartz has given up its first whispers of treasure, but greater methods remain to be revealed. Techniques that refine, concentrate, and draw out even the smallest traces of hidden wealth without the sting of acid or the burn of chemicals. The journey is far from complete. The pan holds its promise, but those flecks are only the beginning. Within every piece of quartz that has been crushed lies more, sometimes hidden so finely that the naked eye alone cannot see it. To stop now would be to leave behind the very wealth that nature has locked inside. And so, the process deepens, moving from simple crushing into something far more delicate. The fragments that remain after the first pounding are gathered once more. What was reduced to coarse grit must now be taken further, ground into an almost powder-like consistency. Traditionally, this is done with a mortar and pestle of stone or metal, each strike reducing the quartz into smaller and smaller particles. The sound is steady, rhythmic, 
and strangely hypnotic. The voice of persistence echoing through the yard, the hillside, or the open field where the prospector works. As the dust builds, it clings to hands and tools alike, a fine reminder that gold never comes easily. Every grain of quartz must be broken so that no trace of precious metal remains locked within. With this finer powder comes a new opportunity. Water, once again, becomes a silent ally. By washing the crushed powder in a pan or a small sluice, gravity does what no acid could ever do. The lighter quartz dust floats and drifts away, while the gold, unyielding in its weight, clings to the bottom, unwilling to leave. Swirl after swirl, rinse after rinse, the prospector watches as the separation sharpens until only the heavy shining particles remain. Some are mere specks, others small flakes, but together they begin to form a collection, a concentration of treasure painstakingly coaxed from the earth. Yet even here, refinement is possible. Not all gold lies in dust or flakes. Sometimes fragments of visible metal still cling stubbornly to quartz, refusing to break away entirely. For this, the prospector turns to the art of handpicking. Each fragment of quartz is inspected closely, sometimes with the aid of a magnifier. Under the bright light of day, one can spot where the yellow gleam of gold veins through the white stone. With careful fingers, these pieces are separated from ordinary fragments. Some may hold veins so rich they can be admired as specimens in their own right. Raw, natural displays of gold coursing through quartz, as beautiful as they are valuable. Others may be destined for further crushing until not a single particle of metal remains locked away. But for the finest dust, the elusive specks that slip between cracks of rock and grain of sand, another ancient method is called upon. Sluicing. A small sluice box, simple yet powerful, allows water to carry lighter material away while capturing the heaviest. Riffles within the sluice trap gold particles, forcing them to settle while everything else flows downstream. The process is mesmerizing, water flowing endlessly while the precious metal clings tightly as if reluctant to leave its resting place. Slowly, the sluice concentrates what the prospector has fought so hard to free, collecting not just gold, but fragments of black sand and other heavy minerals that accompany it. The black sands themselves present a new challenge, dense and stubborn, they often cling to gold, like a shadow. Without chemicals, the separation requires ingenuity. The prospector may use a magnet, drawing away the magnetic particles of iron-rich sands, leaving the non-magnetic gold behind. The process is slow, requiring patience, but each sweep of the magnet cleans the concentrate further, revealing more of the bright treasure beneath. It is a delicate dance of nature's elements, gravity, magnetism, and human persistence, all working in unison. Without acids, without modern chemicals, how can we take the final step? The answer lies in one of the most ancient tools of humanity, fire. When heat is applied to concentrates, whether through a simple charcoal furnace, a clay crucible, or even the embers of a carefully tended campfire, something extraordinary happens. Gold, with its high melting point, begins to gather and fuse, while lighter impurities turn to ash or separate. This was the way of forgotten prospectors. To harness nature's own flame to transform dust into droplets, droplets into a bead, and a bead into a nugget. It is slow, it is painstaking, but it is pure. The metal that emerges carries no stain of chemical manipulation, only the fingerprints of earth, water, and fire. At last, imagine holding in your hand a small glowing bead formed from fragments once hidden deep inside stone. This bead is not just gold. It is history, science, and mystery fused into a single shining object. Each particle of it was once locked away for millions of years, waiting for human hands to find, free, and cherish. And here lies the suspenseful truth. This method, though forgotten by many, was the very foundation of the great gold rushes of history. It built empires, toppled kingdoms, and set thousands of seekers wandering across wild frontiers. All with nothing more than rock, water, gravity, patience, and fire. What is gold if not a reflection of human spirit? 
It resists corrosion, it resists destruction, and yet, when treated with care, it bends, melts, and takes new form. The prospector who extracts gold without chemicals does more than claim wealth. They honor nature's process, unchanged for millennia. And perhaps the greatest treasure of all is not the beat in the hand, but the knowledge in the mind. That in a world of shortcuts and chemicals, there remains a path carved by patience, endurance, and respect for nature. So now, when you see a rock glittering with possibility, remember this. The earth still hides treasures in plain sight, waiting for those who know the old ways. No acids, no chemicals, no shortcuts, only the raw forces of nature. And that is where EGS Pro stands, uncovering not just gold, but the secrets that lie beneath every stone. Stay tuned, because the story of Earth's hidden wealth is far from over. Tomorrow's rock might hold the next secret. This is EGS Pro, where knowledge is the real gold and every stone has a story.